Hello everybody, Michael the Librarian of Magic here, finding a catalog in the magical and pointing you to it. Today is October the 18th, and we're trucking right through the month on this third season of a Draw a Villain a Day for the month of October. And I have another drawing, another Halloween treat today. And that villain drawing is of Cerberus, the three-headed dog, uh, who's the guardian of the underworld, kind of works for Hades. Uh, and guards guards the underworld. And of course I've got Hercules there on top taming the beast as happens in the film and in the and in Greek mythology. Um, you know, conquering taming Cerberus is one of Hercules' uh, feats that he has to accomplish. Um, as I said, this character is based directly on Greek myth, which most of the film Hercules is in uh, one way or the other. And um, this is a cool character. It was really fun to draw and to get Hercules in there and try to get the faces right and stuff like that because it's kind of scary looking. Uh, the teeth are really crazy. Um, it, it's just interesting to you know place the three heads together and stuff like that. Uh, this character model was designed by an artist named Gerald Scarf, who's a British cartoonist and illustrator um, who worked for many years in various magazines uh, in the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, he did the artwork, the album art for Pink Floyd's The Wall, which is very famous album art. Um, and anyway, he was brought in to do character model, character designs for this film. And he did do some character sketches for Cerberus, as well as the Fates, and Hades, and Hydra, and Nessus. Um, so he did some pretty cool work on this movie. It was interesting that they that they tapped him to do that. Um, he's a pretty, pretty well-known artist uh, in his own right. Um, C Cerberus here is the only Hercules... Uh, monster in the film to not die uh, he because he gets tamed by Hercules and um, the other huge thing to really talk about here with Cerberus is the the vocalizations the sound effects for Cerberus were done by a voice actor named Frank Welker I talked a little bit about a little bit about before in another video um, I think in the Rescuers Down Under video, I talked about him a little bit, but he is somebody, if you're interested in animation, the history of animation and voiceover work and stuff like that, he's somebody you really need to know about. Uh, he's ha he's done over 800 different character roles for film, TV, video games, and all of that stuff, uh, commercials, and so forth. He does a lot of animals, monsters, creatures, um, animal noises, stuff like Cerberus here. In Hercules alone, he also did um, the voice of Peg you know, the sounds of Pegasus and Hydra as well. Um, I'm going to list a bunch of his roles so that you kind of get an idea of the breadth of his work. I promise you that if you've seen any animation, pretty much at all, you have heard Frank Welker's work. You're definitely familiar with him. I'll give you a little taste. And this is going to sound like um, exhaustive, but it is by far not. He has done a lot of stuff. But here is a sampling of what he has done in his career. Uh, first of all, one of the rare live-action roles uh, that he ever did in his career, if you want to see kind of what he looks like in live-action, he played this character named Henry in the Disney film The Computer Wore Tennis Shoes, starring Kurt Russell. Um, and uh, as time went on, he pretty much got more and more famous for voiceover stuff. He has been the principal voice of, of principal voice work uh, artist for Fred Jones in Scooby Doo since the beginning in 1969, and most incarnations of Fred have pretty much been him all the way up until this day. A couple of them haven't, but most of them have. He also has taken over the voicing roles of Scooby Doo since around 2002, and a lot of different people have done that too. But for the most part, it's been Frank Welker. He also has voiced. Megatron and Soundwave in various versions of tra the Transformers franchise. He voiced um, 
Abu, Raja the Tiger, and the Cave of Wonders Panther Sand thing in Aladdin. He voiced Toby and Felicia, who are a dog and a cat, both in The Great Mouse Detective. As I said, he's done a lot of animals. And then, of course, uh, he did a lot of stuff in the Disney Afternoon uh, time. He had eight different roles in The Adventures of the Gummy Bears, including the Marquis de Bouya Bays. That was kind of a, a notable one. He voiced ten different characters over time in the original DuckTales, including Big Time Beagle, um, Baggy Beagle, and Bubba the Cave Duck. He was the voice, uh, as I had mentioned before, about Rescuers Down Under. He was the vocalizations of Marahute, the Golden Eagle, uh, Joanna the Goanna, and he was also the singing voice of uh, Percival McLeach. McLeach was voiced in the film by George C. Scott, but the singing part was actually Frank Welker. He did ten different roles in Goof Troop, um, including Giblet the Clown and Earl of Earl's Auto. He voiced uh, Bronx in Gargoyles and also a couple of other uh, roles in Gargoyles. He was the vocal sounds of Bigfoot in a Goofy movie, and, you know, I like to mention a Goofy movie any chance I get. And then a couple of other cool roles not that are Disney-related, but not Disney Afternoon or anything, that I, I thought would be cool to highlight as well. He did all of the animal sounds for Auntie the Ant in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, which is kind of a cool one. Um, you don't think about it, but, like, Somebody has to do that, or else they have to come up with some sort of sound effect method for it, and they chose a person, and this, that person was Frank Welker. And then he also did all of the uh, vocal effects stuff for Cricky in Mulan, the, the, the lucky cricket in the film Mulan. So, And that's just a small sample of all of the stuff he did, including Cerberus here, and Pegasus and Hydra in Hercules. So... His career is vast. I mean, if you look him up, you you will be there for a while. Just going. I mean, he's been involved in everything in one one way or another when it comes to animation stuff. You'll be shocked if you look up his career. So, yeah, this is a cool excuse to talk about um, Frank Welker and and the huge volume of work that he's done. And it was just interesting to um, you know bring up this little sort of side antagonist or side villain um who eventually gets tamed by hercules uh but but very cool very cool to draw and um i like i like hercules as a film so i kind of wanted to include that again even though i've done hades before i thought why not cerberus so hopefully you enjoyed this hopefully you enjoyed learning a little bit about frank welker and um gerald scarf and some of the people who brought uh cerberus the disney version of cerberus to life uh, thanks as always for watching these. I will be back tomorrow with another one, and uh, I hope that you join me then. Until then, have a great day. Bye-bye.